communism. No single idea has seemed more subversive to the American way of life than communism. We took the position that bourgeois democracy was a fraud. It was concealing the dictatorship of the ruling class. The small group of people owned all the wealth in the country. The need of the working class was our primary activity. If you're screwing the people who work for you, my job is to not let you do that. Communists wanted to produce enough of everything for everybody, to put an end to unemployment, insecurity, racist antagonism. We thought we needed to solve all of the economic problems, and especially the racism, which flows from those who rule the United States. With its hostility to the unequal distribution of wealth under capitalism, and its advocacy of a classless society, nothing has generated more fear and animosity in America than communism. Yet between 1930 and 1960, an estimated one million men and women marched under its banners, believing that the only way to fulfill the American dream was by following the road to communism. We cannot patch up this old system that after hundreds of years cannot feed its people, cannot find jobs for its people, practices racism as a, as a part of government policy. We need a new system. We have to change the whole system. In 1983, a small group of communists and former communists told us of their experiences, their successes and failures, and why they dedicated their lives to the Communist Party USA. We have to remember that American communists were Americans. They had a loyalty to changing America. They were, I think, very sincerely helping to make the United States into a more democratic, more egalitarian society less racist, fairer to workers, to women also. But at the same time, they believed in one of the most tyrannical, most murderous regimes in human history, Stalin's Soviet Union. <laughs> 